Hello YouTubes and welcome back to Tally's Marine Tales. Today I really just wanted to add my two cents into Discovery Shark Week that has been going on this week. You know, I'm essentially what you could call a shark scientist. The vast majority of my research focuses on sharks and rays. I love everything to do with sharks. And so every year when Shark Week comes around, I get really excited. But this is inevitably followed by disappointment because it's the same sensationalist nonsense that Discovery Shark Week puts out year on year and year. And as Christian from Shark Bites rightly points out, they keep showing the same three species over and over and over again. You have the great white shark, the bull shark, the tiger shark. And so if all of your shark knowledge came from Shark Week, you probably only think there were about five species of sharks in the whole world, which is just ridiculous because there are over 500 species of sharks in our ocean. And there's so much cool science happening on all of these different cool sharks but all we hear are the same stories on the same three species over and over and over again. And quite frankly, I'm over it. So this new show that Shark Week is putting out this year is the ultimate epitome of everything that is wrong with Discovery Shark Week. It's called Cocaine Sharks. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's like the big one doing the rounds. And it's obviously a play on Cocaine Bear, which was a big story, wildly popular a couple of months back when they made a movie out of it. And I will be honest, when I first heard the title Cocaine Sharks, I immediately rolled my eyes because, um, but I did do my due diligence. I read up all about what this show is about. Unfortunately, I couldn't watch it because here in South Africa, nobody cares about us. I can't access Discovery Shark Week. So um, that, that's a gripe for another day. But anyway, there was enough information floating around the internet about the show, given its popularity, for me to know 100% that this was not something I would want to watch anyway, because it sounds like a bunch of nonsense. So the crux of the story is actually that there are these illegal bags of cocaine floating in the waters of Florida, which actually has been a huge problem um, in the past few decades. There are these smugglers that smuggle drugs um, from further down south and they kind of like dump them in the water and because of the way the currents around that area work, they kind of wash up on the beaches of Florida. So this is a big problem. So the two hosts of the show, Tracy Finara and Tom Hurd, seem to think that the sharks in the area are ingesting this cocaine and perhaps even becoming addicted to it. So in the show, they performed experiments to try and provide evidence for this, which, you know, I'm all for. I'm a scientist. So when somebody says they're doing an experiment to provide evidence for a hypothesis, I'm in. Show me the evidence. <sighs> Except for the fact that the experiments that they used <laughs> were just a bunch of nonsense. And I'm going to say nonsense a lot in this video, but that's just precisely because what this story is. So I'm actually going to read a line directly from one of the articles covering the story. For the experiments, Fanara and marine biologist Tom Blowfish heard dropped bales that looked like bales of cocaine in the water to see how sharks reacted to them. They looked for behavioral changes, such as if the sharks were attracted to the fake bales of cocaine and if they chose to eat them over their typical food. So at surface level, this kind of makes sense. They're dropping what looks like bales of cocaine into the water next to a shark's typical food source, <laughs> but except in this case, what they use as their typical food source that they dropped next to the supposed bales of cocaine were dummy swans. Swans, I ask you with tears in my eyes. They have the wrong water body here, people. Why are you using swans? And so because sharks are going for the supposed cocaine bales over the swans, which is definitely not their typical food source, this is how our evidence to show that they have become addicted to these bales of cocaine. In another experiment they did for the show, they made bait balls of highly concentrated fish powder, which they wanted to use as kind of like a substitute for cocaine to show what sharks would act like if they were to ingest cocaine. And uh, the quote apparently from Tom Hurd in the show was that, I think we have got a potential scenario of what it may look like if you gave sharks cocaine. We gave them what I think is the next best thing. It sets their brains aflame. It was crazy. So now because sharks are going crazy for food, I mean, who would have guessed that would happen? This is somehow supposed to show how they would act if they ingested cocaine, which is in no way similar chemically, smell wise, taste wise, or any other way wise to fish powder. Again, even Tom Hurd himself later told Live Science in an interview that 
We have no idea what cocaine could do to the shark, so we can't even say, well, this is a baseline and go from there. So he even admits himself after the show that this was a waste of time. So why even do it? Um, and in the show, apparently there's also a hammerhead shark acting weird. But again, this is no real evidence for the idea that the shark ingested cocaine. And after the show, again, Tracy herself said that there's no telling whether the shark behavior changes were associated with exposure to cocaine or if it was just a coincidence. So again, just no real evidence. Now there is actually quite a worthwhile message behind all of this clickbait nonsense. And both Tracy Fanara and Tom Hurd say themselves that they really want to shine a light on the problem that is, you know, all of us, we take drugs in some form or another, whether it's just pharmaceuticals like painkillers, these drugs and pharmaceuticals end up in our water systems, they end up polluting our water systems, they can end up harming aquatic life, and they can even end up in the flesh of the fish that we eat, thus harming ourselves. So, you know, there is an important message of like pollution behind this whole thing, but the message is lost behind this ridiculous title and this idea that there are these cocaine crazed sharks off of the waters of Florida, for which I will reiterate, there is absolutely no evidence to show that this is happening. And both hosts also say that more research is needed, to which I say amen. And they also say that they plan to collect blood and tissue samples going forward to see, you know, if there are traces of cocaine in these sharks, to which I say, why was this not done in the first place? Because this is one of the only ways that you can actually provide evidence that these sharks are ingesting cocaine. Also, you know, what surprised me was that given the fact that these cocaine bales and wash-ups in Florida seem to be so popular and with the amount of people flying drones these days, like why was there no photographic or video evidence of like a real shark attacking or whatever you want to call it, feeding on a cocaine bale. If it was happening, surely somebody would have seen it by now. So there's not a single scrap of any kind of real evidence, real science in this whole show, but because of it, the whole internet is blowing up with headlines like cocaine sharks are going crazy, or experts say cocaine sharks may be feasting on drugs dumped off Florida. And my personal favorite, Cocaine sharks, a new reason to be terrified of Florida. So yeah, this really is the problem with Shark Week. It's the problem with putting these sensationalist headlines out there without any kind of real evidence to back it up. And I would just like to state categorically as a scientist that this is not how real science is done. I just wanna put it out there. But I do wanna leave this video on a bit of a happier note. So I would suggest that instead of feeding into the sensationalism of Discovery Shark Week, I recommend instead Nacho's Shark Fest. This has actually been running for the past three or four weeks now, I think. And I much prefer it to Shark Week. Um, there is a little bit of sensationalism involved, but it's nowhere near on the scale of Discovery Shark Week. And there's actually a lot of really interesting and really cool shows. One of my favorite was called Maui Shark Mystery, which, which actually aired for the first time last year, but you can still watch it this year. Um, and it's a really cool story about some really amazing female marine scientists doing some really cool research. So highly recommend that one. And the best part is that Nat Geo is streaming all of this content like live for free on the YouTube channel. So you just head over to the YouTube channel and you can watch whatever is streaming at the time. So yeah, it's really cool, way better than Shark Week. So I recommend you check that out. But if there are any fans of Shark Week out there, let me know down in the comments which Shark Week show you really enjoyed. I'd love to hear from you guys and what your opinions are. And that's it for this video. Until next time, I hope you have a very happy day.